Hey, brother. And the more we upload on this channel, the more into the just entire history of animation I get. Today's video is actually going to be about something entirely different, but as often is the case, I began investigating one path and found myself wandering down a completely separate path. And that path led me to a brand new Easter egg in one of my favorite movies. Up. An easter egg that has been staring us all in the face this entire time and that basically suggests that Kevin is actually Mickey Mouse. We often give a lot of credit to Toy Story on this channel for paving the way for the computer animated paradise we are enjoying now. A place where we can enjoy lots of different computer animated films like Shrek or How to Train Your Dragon or Despicable Me or Frozen or Tangled or Wreck-It Ralph or Big Hero 6, none of which were actually created by Pixar but all of which exist because of it. So then, what paved the way to Toy Story? Well, you could argue quite a few things, but if you want to continue sort of down this same train of thought, I might argue Snow White, the very first Disney princess, and the very first feature-length animated film. But what about before that? Well, before there were full-length animated movies, there were just animated shorts. These would normally play before the featured picture at the movies, kind of like the animated shorts before Pixar movies today. And the undisputed champion of this era, whether you knew this is where he came from or not, is none other than the most recognizable character on Earth, Mickey Mouse. But it almost wasn't. It was almost a different character named Oswald the Rabbit. And if you're thinking, wow, those two look really similar, that's because they were actually both designed by the man himself, Walt Disney. And actually, Oswald was created first and was really popular, which was a big deal at the time because, at the time, animation wasn't really all that popular. The other big players of the day were Felix the Cat and Coco the Clown, both of which at that time had been around for about a decade, but both of which also found themselves almost immediately in the shadow of Disney's emerging rabbit. So then what happened? Why do we have Mickey instead of Oswald? Well, here is where we meet the villain of our story, and I think you'll agree his name sounds familiar. Charles Mintz. Mintz owned and operated Winkler Productions, which was the distribution company for what was then called Disney Brothers. Disney Brothers? I mean, seems like you missed a real opportunity to put the word super in front of that, I'm just saying. And at first, things were going really well. Oswald's popularity allowed Disney to grow, but the economy was a little shaky at the time, this is at the end of the 1920s, and as time passed, Mintz was less willing to pay the full price for new Oswald cartoons. In fact, he even had his brother-in-law start hiring away Disney's animators, inviting them to join his studio instead. Not cool, man. Not cool. And here's where things get a little tricky. Since Winkler Productions had ordered a character from Disney Brothers, which eventually turned out to be Oswald the Rabbit, they were the ones who owned the character, even though they weren't the ones who created it. And since Mintz had hired away most of Disney's animators, after the contract between the two ended, Disney suddenly found himself without control of his most popular character, a bare-bones staff, and had lost his biggest client. But don't feel too bad for him, because if ever there was a case of winning the battle but losing the war, this was it. Because I'm sure as you all know, the Walt Disney Company is alive and well today, and I bet you can guess what happened next. Disney created, in secret, a character to compete with Oswald the Rabbit, and this time was careful to trademark the character for himself. That character was Mickey Mouse, who Disney debuted officially in Steamboat Willie, which just also so happened to be the first ever cartoon to be accompanied by a synchronized soundtrack. The whole thing went over extremely well with audiences, and the rest, as they say, is history. Which brings us back to Charles Muntz and 
Up. The story of Up can be interpreted in a lot of different ways, whether you just think it's the story of an old man getting over his wife, or an old man's ascent into heaven, or maybe just an old man going crazy. But no matter how you slice it, Charles Muntz was hands down inspired by Charles Mintz. And while I'm definitely not saying that Up was specifically created to tell a wildly metaphorical version of the Oswald Mickey battle, it's hard not to recognize that much like Disney and Mints, Carl and Muntz are both fighting over the well-being of a very valuable and or rare character. Muntz seeks Kevin for personal glory and money, while Carl sees him as a representation of freedom and spontaneity, aka his dead wife Ellie. He's just happy Kevin exists and wants to protect him, or protect her. And, well, I guess maybe he doesn't at the beginning, but eventually he does. I mean, Carl's a good guy. So, for the record, just because I can already hear it down in the towel section, no, I don't think Kevin is literally Mickey Mouse. But, if Muntz is meant to represent Mintz, then there's almost no question that, at least in some way, Kevin is supposed to be the Mickey Mouse of that story. Now, of course, the real irony of the whole story is that nowadays, many people see Disney as that giant, greedy organization that abuses trademarks and is buying up all of the things you love, like Marvel and Star Wars and ESPN, and wait for it, because I think this is the hilarious cherry on top of this cake, as of 2003, Disney once again owns Oswald the Rabbit. Oh man, that is what you call total and 100% victory right there. But my question for you guys and everyone else is a little bit more serious today. I'd love to know what you guys think about Disney like buying up a bunch of different properties like this. Like, is it a bad thing or is it a good thing? Because hey, now we get a lot more of those things. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I'd love to hear what you guys think in the towel section down below. These socks are amazing! And a special thanks to these patrons who support Super Carlin Brothers on Patreon. Guys, thanks for watching. As always, please leave a like on this video if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Disney videos. If you want to see some more stuff about Up, I recommend you check out this video here where we talk about maybe how Carl is crazy, or check out this video here where we reveal who the mysterious Emma Jean is. Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.